this is what's happening in terms of routing. So I have the instrument bus that's receiving all of the music, not the vocals, just the music. So it's solo there, that's what it's getting. So it's getting no vocals, just the music. Okay, and then I've got vocal bus too, which is, as you guessed it, just vocals. So I do that to separate them so that if it gets to the end of the mix and I'm just like, oh, the vocal needs to come up a bit or the music needs to go down a bit, I can just, I've got them both on two faders. As you can see, I thought the music was a bit low. So the music has all been raised. Uh, can you see it on your screen? Damn it, I don't know if you can. <laughs> I think I'm blocking it, but this channel here, like down below, um, it's got like a half a dB boost. So I must've got to the end of the mix and thought, yeah, his vocals are a bit loud. I'll just push the, push the music up a little bit. Um, but then the other good reason for that is that once it's there, um, as you can see, it's sending to bus 32, which I call my master effects bus which is this. I've got an RC20 on there. So that basically means that before it goes to my output track, it's the whole mix is going through one RC20 and I'm using it a lot on this song. Um, I'm automating it to do like some EQ cutoff build up stuff. I'm automating the distortion and the noise and uh, even the width, making the whole mix mono and then in the drop, bringing it back to stereo. So to kind of like, like make it seem like the whole thing's just gotten really wide and exploded. That's a kind of a, a good common trick. I can't remember who, who taught me that. I think it might've been one of the guys from Rudimental or the guy who mixes Rudimental stuff anyway. I remember him saying like he monos the verse or at least pan stuff in there. So then the chorus just goes boom and everything comes out and comes to life and the width is there. I think I'm doing that on this song. I'm only automating the magnitude. So I've got it set just how I want it. The magnitude, it's not quite like wet and dry. It's, it's more like energy. <laughs> it's like how intense. So it's not like the signals running all the time and you're just fading it in and out. It's like, it's controlling the parameters down there. You can see it moving stuff. So yeah, I've got the whip set up here on 160%. So I guess what it's, what it's doing is like boosting the width loads in some of the buildup moments with a load of noise and a load of distortion. So. <laughs> It pulls noise in, it pulls distortion in, it takes the bass out and it makes the whole mix go super wide all with one slider, which is really cool. I know most people use it just like to sort of make a synth or a, a vocal sound a bit old and rusty, but um, I've been enjoying using it on, on the master output and putting the whole mix through it and treating it more like a DJ mixer. That's, that's what I was thinking. It's like, what would I do if I had this tune on my Pioneer mixer right in front of me? I'd be doing some delay. I'd be doing some reverb. I'd be pulling out the bass, the, the bass, <laughs> the bass. So yeah, with the RC20, you can kind of do some similar stuff, but with one knob, which is cool. So let, let me just pull everything up mad and then you can just get what it would be like. Yeah, crazy. So. Adding a lot of tension, a lot of building vibes there. Who knew um, is track four. Track four off of my latest album, Energy. Um, I wrote this with Howard, my brother, and with Mick Jenkins. <laughs> 